starting a new computer art tutorial and what we're going to be doing today is taking a pattern and get, putting it onto something where it shouldn't belong. So taking either kind of a texture like going on in the tiger llama that I've got going on here or the zebra pattern on the elephant going on here. Um, that that's basically what we're going to get across is using a tool called the uh, pattern stamp and defining patterns in Photoshop. So we could really do this with any kind of pattern or texture of some object or surface and put it somewhere else where it shouldn't belong. So in order to get started here, going to a new project, we're going to actually just start by doing a simple Google search for a few images. Um, first, I had this image of the elephant. I'll go ahead and copy that image. Go ahead into Photoshop. Go file new. The clipboard in Photoshop will recognize I've copied an image, so I won't change anything here for this particular project. And then just hit Command V and paste that element in. Now I'll go back to Google Chrome here, and I've already done a search for some zebra print. Uh, make sure that when you look through for a uh, you know animal pattern of some kind or whatever pattern you're looking for, that doesn't have a kind of uh, protected uh, watermark stamp over it. As you can see, all these ones do. Um, this one does not. And so that's the one that I'm going to go with. I'm going to, going to right click, copy that image, go back to Photoshop, and this time again, I'm going to go File New. Again, using the clipboard size here, so not changing any of that, and clicking Create, then just hitting Command V to paste in my zebra texture. Now, what I'm going to do is go to the Edit menu, and I'm going to go down to Define Pattern. And here I can name this pattern. Um, actually, I'm going to back up a second. Before I do that, I want to check the size of this image. So I'm going to go to Image menu, down to Size, and see that the width is 10 inches and the height is 14, resolution is 72. So that I'll need to remember. I'm going to go into this image and check and make sure that those are about similar dimensions. So this is much wider. I'm going to reduce this to about 10. So that's the same width as the other pattern that I took. And then the resolution is also the same, which is good. So that means I've got a good match. If those are too far different, then you might not have the best results with this project. So now what I'm going to do is, again, um, go back into here where I was at before was I was going down to define pattern and we're gonna call this zebra and say okay. Then I'll go back over to my elephant here. Actually, what I'm gonna do is make a second one of these. So I'm gonna to go to image, image rotation, and rotate this image 90 degrees clockwise. Then I'm gonna to go to edit, and I'm going to define this as yet another pattern. And I'll call it just like zeb2 or something like that, and hit enter. Now I go back to my first original project, um, my and my elephant image. I'm going to take my quick selection brush, uh, make sure it's on the add to selection option, and then just go ahead and click and drag around here. I need to select basically all of the elephant's head. I'm going to do two different selection areas on this one, the head, and then the body as two separate places. So, oops, I got a little carried away there with my quick selection brush. It can get a little bit antsy at times. And so just clicking and holding here. Um, again, I have a little bit of this area down here. I'll click on the subtract from option and then just click and drag into this space a little bit. And so once I get that pretty close to the edge of the ear, that should be good. I don't want the tusks included. I'm gonna go back to add to. I notice I'm missing a couple spots on the trunk here and that should be good. Now I'm gonna go ahead and take my pattern stamp tool. So you have a clone stamp and a pattern stamp, both paired with each other, both look very similar, except pattern stamp has this little kind of grid texture pattern looking in the corner. Our pattern menu is up here, and as you'll see, you have a bunch of patterns to already kind of choose from. Um, and if you click on this gearbox, you have a bunch of other patterns that are stored already in Photoshop, but you can also see you have the ones that we've created ourselves as well. So I'm gonna take this kind of vertical one that I first created, set my brush size pretty high so that I don't have to uh, really work too hard to paint and fill this. And I'm just gonna go ahead and paint and fill. Actually, hit Command Z. I'm working on the same layer. I wanna make sure I create a new layer here for this. So, um, and as I look closer at the trunk, it looks like I missed a few spots. So I'm gonna go back in really quick with my uh, quick selection brush and make sure I have that whole outline there. Cool. Now I'm ready to go with my pattern stamp tool. So I'm just gonna click drag and brush in this zebra pattern all over the elephant's face here. 
Nice. And then basically all we'll have to do is go ahead and change the layer style here to overlay. And then you kind of have that nice combining blend of the images there. You can't really see the eye because it happens to fall on a dark spot, so I may erase a little bit of that pattern, but I'll come back to that afterwards. Now I'm going to take my um, selection again. I'm going to hit Command D to get rid of my selection area. Click on layer one. I'm going to do a separate selection for this part of the body because I don't think it would look very realistic if the pattern flowed from the face onto the body in the, in the one same way because this ear is separate from the body here so it shouldn't really flow all the way the same depending on the images you're working with you may or may not need to do this really um, but I feel that I'm I kind of need to with this particular image because there's space between here so this pattern shouldn't really run in here and be the same pattern so that's why I made that second one I'm going to go back to my uh, pattern stamp tool and I'm going to choose this kind of side-to-side -side pattern that we made before. Um, I could even have fun and mix up patterns here and go with kind of a tiger print or something like that, but I'll keep it consistent with this. And again, I did the same thing I did before. I want to make sure I create a new layer here before I just brush this pattern in on um, the same layer as my image. That way I can make sure that I make it an overlay and it really blends into the texture that's beneath it. So again, I'm going to go with the layer style here turn it to overlay, and that blends those two layers together. I'm going to hit Command D, and now I'm getting pretty close to finished. I'm going to take my eraser tool and just kind of bring that eye back out. I'm going to turn down the opacity just a touch on this layer until I can see where his eye is. There it goes. Um, take a brush that has a faded edge and maybe just click once or twice here just to erase out that little bit of a shape. Um, turn the opacity back up for that layer, see what we have left, and that looks pretty decent. You know, I could have spent a, another minute uh, working on how that eye is really revealed there, but I think that, that works as far as what we wanted to get out of this particular computer art tutorial. So, hope you have some fun using the pattern stamp tool and taking some pattern off any object, whether it be candy canes or, or something more natural, and uh, putting it onto somewhere where it doesn't belong.